The background for this comedy is most likely a historical fact, about which, however, I cannot find any more precise information. The reason for it comes from an engraving that I saw several years ago in Switzerland. One noticed in it, first, a judge sitting gravely on the bench. Before him stood an old woman holding a broken jug. She seemed to be demonstrating the injustice that had happened to it. The accused, a young farmer fellow whom the judge was thunderously haranguing, was still defending himself, but weakly. A girl who'd probably witnessed in the affair, for who knows what the occasion was for this misdeed, standing in the middle between her mother and her betrothed, was playing with her apron. Someone who'd borne false witness could not have stood there more contritely. And the court clerk, perhaps he'd been looking at the girl just before, was now looking sideways at the judge, suspiciously, just as Creon, on a similar occasion, had regarded Oedipus. Below it was written, The Broken Jug. The original was, if I'm not mistaken, by a Dutch master. What the fuck, Adam? What happened to you? Look at you, look at me. To stumble while you need our feet. On this smooth floor, is there a stump? All the same, I stumble. For each of us has a nasty stumbling block inside. You descend from a careless ancestor who fell when things began. His fall made him famous. Your case and his are they not the same? My case? Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I told you right here is where I fell. Fell literally, fell literally. When did this all happen? Just now. The moment I stepped out of bed. With the morning sun still on my lips, into the morning I tumbled. Before my day had even begun, the good Lord decides to wrench my foot. I bet it was the left one he twisted. The left one? This one? Here. Of course. The one that walks heavily in the way of sin, anyway. Your club foot. Club foot. One foot is just as clumpy as the other. Pardon me. There you do wrong by your right. Your right cannot boast of such force, and it's sooner to venture out on slippery slopes. Oh, please, where one dares to go, the other follows. What got your face so fucked up? How does it look? Hideous. All torn up, a horror to look at. A chunk is missing from the cheek. How big? I couldn't guess without a scale. Oh yeah, the devil too. Here, look for yourself. A sheep that cornered by hounds thrusts itself through thorns, leaves behind no man, no more, no more, no more, no more than flesh. So God knows where you left it. Hmm. Yes, that's right. It looks unlovely. The nose also suffered. And the eye. Oh no, not the eye. Ugh. Here, is a blow straight across. Bloody. God, it punished me. As if a furious farm had let loose on it. That's the eye bone. Yeah, now look at that. I didn't feel any of it. Right, right, that's how it goes in the heat of battle. Battle? What? I fought with that damn goat on the oven. Now I remember. I lose my balance, and yes, at the same time, reach out, arms flailing like a drowning man, clutch at my pants, which last night I'd hung, all wet to dry upon the rack, clutch hold of them, you see, believing like a fool that they would hold me up when rip, 
Now the belt breaks. Now belt and pants and knee, we fall in there, smack on the corner of that stove where a wrench sticks out his nose. I come hurtling him first down. <laughs> well, well, God damn. Adam's first fall. That is, his first fall out of bed. Anyways, what I wanted to say was... What's up? Judge Adam, get ready for an unexpected visit from Utrecht. Go on. The district magistrate is coming. Who's coming? The district magistrate is coming from Utrecht. She's making an inspection tour of the local courts. And she's arriving here today. Today? Are you crazy? She was in Holler yesterday, and she's already inspected the court there. A peasant saw them hitching up the horses to come to Huysen. Today, her, the magistrate from Utrecht, to inspect. Worthy woman, she fleeces her own flock and then hates their bratty faces. Coming to Huysen just to bully us. She went to Holler. She will come to Huysen too. Be on your guard. Get out. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, get out with your crazy fairy tales. Listen, it's not like the previous inspector, Justice Wackholder. Now it's Justice Walter, Inspector. So let it be Justice Walter. Leave me in peace. The woman has sworn her oath of office and practices like us according to the standard edicts and customs. Now I assure you, Justice Walter appeared in Holler unexpectedly yesterday, inspected their treasury and their files, and suspended the judge and clerk there. Why? I don't know, officially speaking. Well, my friend, matters now is friendship. You know one hand scrubs the other. I know you would also like to become village judge, and God knows you deserve it if anyone does. But today, today is not yet your time. Today let the cup pass from you. Me, village judge, who do you think I am? You are a friend of well-formed words, and you've studied your Cicero as well as anyone in the school in Amsterdam. Listen, hold back your zeal for today. Fortune will fall your way another time, and then you can display your abilities. Come on now, I the two of us... In his days, days, you know, even the great Demosthenes held his tongue. Follow his example. I may not be the king of Macedonia, but I can still be grateful in my own way. Enough of this suspicion. I tell you, have I... Look, ever... I, for my part, I too follow the Great Creek. One could, if pressed, work out a speech on depositions and interests. Why waste good prose on all that? Well, then. I'm free from all such guilt the devil take it. For what it's worth, it's all a big joke, hatched by night, that shuns the nosy light of day. I know. My goodness. There's no reason why a judge, when he's not sitting on the bench, should be as cold as a polar bear. I'll say. Well then, come, my friend. Let's go to the registry real quick. I'm going to stack up the files, for they, they lie there like the Tower of Babel. Quite right. And that is the last chapter in the history of the world.
hell is my wave? What? Um, because you... Well? Last night at 11 o'clock... Well, out with it. Oh, well, you came, remember? You came in without your wig. I came in without my wig. Yes, by my faith, Judge Adams, sir. You were bareheaded when you came home. You said you'd fallen. Don't you remember? I had to wash the blood off your head. Shut up! There isn't a word of truth to it. But the wound, you had it since yesterday. No, today. The wound today, the wig yesterday. I was wearing it on my head, powdered white, and I pulled it off with my hat, you see, by accident, just as I stepped into the house. Then the cat, that filthy pig, went and had a litter of kittens in it this morning, sitting under my bed, disgusting. Now I remember it. And the cat? What? Are you? I swear. Five kittens, yellow and black, and one is white. Black one, I'll drown in the river. I don't know. Do you want one? In the wig. The devil should take me! Hung up the wig on a chair as I was going to bed. I bumped the chair during the night, so it fell. Ah, but then the cat grabs it in its mouth. Oh, boy. And drags it under the bed and has kittens in it. In its mouth? No. No? How else? The cat? What? No. Or you perhaps? In its mouth. Yes. I believe so. I shoved it with my foot beneath the bed when I saw it this morning. Well, what? They're scoundrels, those things. They mate and have babies wherever they find a place to do it. session today? It is. The litigants are waiting outside the door already. I had a dream. The litigant seized me and dragged me before the judge's bench. And yet it was me, I myself, who sat up there on the bench. He berated me, he barked at me, and swindled me down, and sentenced my neck to an iron collar. Ha! You, you judged yourself. I swear. And then the two of us became one, we fled, and had to spend the night among the spruces. And? And the dream? Oh, you the hell with it. If not the dream, then some mischief, whatever it might be, is working against me. A ridiculous fear. Just stick to the rules when the magistrate's present, and argue from the judge's bench, so that the dream of the hounded judge doesn't come true in another way.
morning, Judge Adam. Welcome. Welcome, Your Honor. Welcome to our feast. My goodness. Who could have expected such a joyful visit? Not even in my dreams could I have dared imagine such good fortune as early as 8 o'clock this morning. I know I come early. As I go about in my country's service, I must be sure that those who host me still bear me some good as they send me on my way. The Superior Court of Utrecht wants to improve the administration of justice in the countryside, which leaves much to be desired. Expect abuses to be severely reprimanded. But my business on this trip is not quite so strict. I shall merely observe, not punish. And even if I find that not everything is just as it should be, I should be happy if they're at least possible. Truly, a most noble and praiseworthy way of viewing things. I do not doubt that here and there your worship will find our old customs to be worthy of a just rebuke, even if they have been in practice in the Netherlands since the time of Charles V. Well, anything the mind cannot invent? You know, it's said that the world gets more clever by the day, and I know everybody's reading his Pufendorf now, but Quis, Quis is a very small part of the world which can have no more nor less than its small share of the general cleverness. Kindly, enlighten the judiciary of Huisum, and rest assured that as soon as you turn your back to us, everything will be fully to your satisfaction. But if you should find everything in our office already just as you like it, well, that would be a miracle, since we only vaguely know what it is you want. Regulations are lacking, you are right. Or rather, we have too many. They need to be sifted. Yes. Through a giant sieve. So much chaff. So much chaff. Is that gentleman there the clerk? Dr. Lish. That's your honor's service. Well, I've been here at the court nine years. This <laughs> have a seat. Oh, thank you. You've made good time coming from Holland. Just two short miles, not too far. How did you know that? How? Um, your worship's servant. A peasant. You just arrived from Holland. A peasant. Us. Yes, a peasant. Ah, yes. An unfortunate incident occurred that dampened the good spirits that ought to otherwise accompany us in our proceedings. Have you been informed about that too? Is it true, Your Honor? About Judge Fowl, that he was put under house arrest and Surely the fool was overwhelmed by despair and... He hanged himself? Yes. And that's made a bad thing worse. But appeared to merely be disorder, chaos, now looks like fraud, which as you know the law cannot tolerate. Tell me how many funds do you administer? Five, Your Worship. Five? What? Five full treasuries? I was under the impression you only have four. Pardon me. With the Rhine flood allocation fund? Ah, the flood allocation fund. And now the Rhine isn't flooding and there's no collection going on. Is the court in session today? Is it? What? Yes, it's the first session of the week. Very good. And the people I saw in your hallway, are they? They will be... It's the litigants. They've arrived early. The situation is just as I'd hoped, gentlemen. Let those people enter, if you would. I shall stay and observe how things are done in peace. We can turn to the treasury and the registry later when the session is done. As you wish. Merciful magistrate. What's the matter? A coincidence. A cursed one has put me out of both my wigs. And now a third one that I wanted to borrow isn't coming through. I shall have to hold the day's session bareheaded. Bareheaded? Yes, by God in heaven. As embarrassed as I am of my judicial countenance without the counsel of my wig. But I should still try at the farm. At the farm? If only my tenant. My Couldn't someone else in town? No, in fact. The preacher, maybe? Preacher... Schoolmaster? Since we got rid of the grain type, Your Worship, something I assisted with in this office here, I can no longer count on their services, both of them. Well, Judge Adam, what now? In the court session, do you presume to wait until your hair grows back? Yes, if you'll allow. I'll, I'll try at the farm. 
How far is it? Oh, barely half an hour. Half an hour? What? And the hour of your session already struck. Get going. I still have to get to Hosawa today. Get going? Yes. So powder your bald head. What in the devil's name have you done with your wigs? Just help yourself out as best as you can. I'm in a rush. And that too. Could I, in the meantime, offer a nice little breakfast? Some cured meats from Braunschweig, maybe a little glass of Danziger? Thank you. Oh, it's no problem at all. I told you I've already had mine. Now go, go, do as best as you can with the time. I needed to record something in my notebook. If you insist. You're terribly banged up, Judge Adam. Did you have a fall? I took a truly mortal blow early this morning as I was getting out of bed. You see, merciful magistrate, I was knocked clear across the room. I thought I would land in my grave. I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope it won't cause you any further trouble. I don't think so. Nor do I think it should hinder me at all in my official duties. If you'll excuse me. Go, go. <laughs> Litigants! Oh, March! Jump-smashing scum! Oh, from Ye for father! Please, Frau, please, 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 from Ye for father! You jump-smashing scum! Oh, from Ye for father! Please, Frau, please, 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 Oh, you judge smashing scum! You, you're going to pay for this! Oh, please, Frau Mother, please calm down! Yeah? Everything will be decided! Oh, yes, decide! Oh, yeah. Look at him, that's why he's down. going to decide my broken side is judge for me. Who is going to decide the judge smash side for me? The only thing they're going to decide here is that this side can keep anything for inside. I wouldn't give the short side of a broken charm for such a decision. Oh, if you can prove you're in the right, you hear? I'll replace it for you! Replace it? If I can prove I'm right, he's going to replace it. I'll replace it for you! Could Go ahead, replace that right jug. Here. Place it down there on the mantel. This jug that doesn't have a lab to stand on, or a side to lie on, or to sit in place. Replace it! Replace oh, it. now listen to me. What's this drivel? What more can a man do? If somebody's broken her jug, she's to be compensated for it. Me compensated? What more can a man do? If one of my rams were speaking. Do you think that justice is a potter? And if the justices tied up their aprons and took it to the kiln, they may as well put you know what inside that jug and compensate it to damage. Compensate, huh? Oh, leave her father. Follow me, oh, that dragon. It's not the broken jug that's upsetting her, it's the wedding that's got a hold. With poor you, she thinks to patch it up. But let me pile it on myself. I'll be dead if I will ever marry that lying slut. You're a hypocrite! Go away, you. Catch the wedding up! Get out of my sight! I beg you, Charles, of my You're dead! One second. That let me just struck a clean in front of you. Nothing. Like my judge stood on the mantle just yesterday. I will grab it by its handles and bring it smash it on your head. But I don't want to patch up this charge. Patch them up. Is this how you want to leave things between us? Patch them up. We should part in anger. In anger? I'm not angry, no. God forgive me. God bless you with as much happiness as you can spare. But were I to return from war, just fine, with a body forged of steel, and live another 80 years in Hussel, I keep on saying it till I die. You false bitch. That's what you came to swear to before the court. Away. You still want to be abused in this way. The man for you is Lord Corporal Peglin, who took his cane to the wards. And not this gaping ape, who's only now begging for a swift cane to the back. Today we'll make the engagement and have the wedding as well. If the baptism were also today, that would be all right with me, and I would suffer my own funeral. If only I could champ out that man's pride that even now rises up to my jugs. Oh, mother, leave the jug alone. Come on, let me go to the city and see if a skilled craftsman won't be able to piece the shards together to your liking. Or, if the jug is really done for, take all my savings and buy yourself a new one. Who would want, for the sake of an earthly vessel, even one from Harrod's time, to make such fuss, such mischief? Speak as though you understand. Do you want to stand in the pillory, Evie, and do bitter penance in church next? Your reputation lay inside that pot. 
and with it, before the whole world, it was smashed to pieces. Even if not before God, or before you, or me, the judge and the prison guard are the master craftsmen that we want. The whip and the stocks are better tools with which to restore the splendor of our honor. This is how I'll bring back the former luster of my judge. soon enough. Adam, is it just because of that jug over there? The one your mother's the one your mother's holding? That I, as far as E, yes, it's only about the broken jug. Adam, and nothing else? E. No, nothing. Adam, really nothing? E. I told you to leave me alone. Go away. Adam, by God, listen. You'd better be smart. E. Have you no shame? Adam. The name's written in the notice now, black on white. Ruprecht Tumpo. It's right here in my bag. Can you hear it rustling, Evie? You can have it in a year to sew into your corset, under the morning guard, when they bring you the news. That Ruprecht dropped dead in Batavia, from who knows which fever, yellow, scarlet, or typhus. Judge Adamson, don't speak with the litigants before the hearing. Sit down and begin your questioning. Excuse me, what is your worship order? What do I order? I told you not to carry on your private suggestive discussions with the litigants before the case is heard. There is your official seat. I expect you to conduct your hearing publicly. Aside. Damn it, I can't be sure. I heard something clatter just as I jumped out. Both the hell with it. The thing can fall two ways and not more. If it doesn't bend, it breaks. Yes, yes, yes. Coming, coming, Your Worship. So, what does Your Worship say? Shall we begin with the proceedings? You seem oddly distracted, sir. What is the matter? I'm so sorry. A hand. 
guinea hen that I bought from a trader in the East Indies. It's caught a case of the peeps. I need to stuff it, but I can't work out how. So I've asked this young lady for advice. I'm a bit obsessive about these things. You see, these hens, they're like my children. Have a seat. Call the litigants for examination. And you, clerk, keep the record. Does your worship want us to follow the formalities or conduct the case as is customary in Huisen? Follow the legal formalities as you do in Huisen and not otherwise. Okay, good. I'll do my best to satisfy you. Clerk, are you ready? I took a moment, sir. Then justice! Take your course. Litigant, come forward. Here I am, Your Honor, Village Judge. Who are you? Me. Yes, who you are. Your name, your station, where you live, and so on. You must be joking, Your Honor. Joke? Me? I sit here in the name of Justice, Brown Martha, and Justice must know who you are. The question is pointless. You see me every Sunday through my window when you're on your way to your farm. Do you know this woman? She lives around the corner, Your Worship, if you follow the footpath through the hedge. She's a lodgekeeper's widow and a midwife now, otherwise an honest woman of good reputation. If you are so well informed, such questions are unnecessary. Record the woman's name and note, well known to the court. As you wish. So you don't care about formalities. Good. Clerk, do as her worship orders. Now ask about the reason for her complaint. Now I'm supposed to... Yes, the reason for her complaint. Oh, that is likewise a jug. Pardon me. What do you mean likewise? A jug? Unremarkable jug. Clerk, record it in a note well known to the court. On the basis of my casual remark, are you saying, Judge? Yes, I'm telling you. Isn't it a jug, Frau Martha? Yes, it is. There you go. The broken. A pedantic detail. Please. So, who broke the jug? That weasel over there, right? Yes, him, the Thank weasel. You. That's, That's not, not true, me. Judge! Aside. Arise, old Adam. Arise! She's lying through her teeth! You shut up, you gaping ape! Your neck will be locked in iron soon enough! Clerk, as I said, write Jug and next to it the name of him who smashed it. The case will be settled right away. Judge Aaron, please, sir. What a forceful way of proceeding. Why is that? Wouldn't you officially? But Her Worship has no use for formalities. If you don't know the proper way to conduct a case, this is not the place to teach you. If this is the only kind of justice you know how to deal out, then step aside. Perhaps your clerk can preside instead. Excuse me? I dealt it out just as we do in Quisum, as you ordered me to. As I ordered you to? On my honor. I ordered you to deal out justice the way the law prescribes, which I presume to be no different in Quisum than anywhere else in the United Provinces. If I may respectfully beg your pardon, we do have, if you'll allow, madam, statutes of our own in Quisum. Not written ones, I'll admit, but ones handed down through a tried and tested tradition I dare say that from that form of justice, I have not deviated one iota. But I'm also quite at home in your other way of doing things. Do you want proof? Go ahead. Order. I can just as well do like justice this way or that. You're embarrassing yourself, Judge. But begin the case again. On my honor. Just watch, and you shall be satisfied. Frau Martha Rule, declare your complaint to the court. I'm suing, as you know, because of this jug. But before I tell you what happened to it, please allow me to describe what it had meant to me. The floor is yours. Nothing, with all due respect. Shards are what you see. The loveliest jug there ever was, smashed in two. Right where this hole is, where there is nothing now, are all the provinces of the Netherlands, handed over to the Spanish King Philip. Here, in his royal robes, stood the Emperor Charles V, 
but only his legs remain now. Here, Philip knelt to receive the crown, but he should be lying in the pot now, except for his backside, and even that's received a blow. Here, his aunts, the French and Hungarian queens, were one sweeping tears of emotion from their eyes. If you can still see the one lifting her hand with a handkerchief, it looks as if she's weeping for herself. And here, the houses, on the main square in Brussels, someone still gazing curiously out the window, but only God knows what they can see now. From Martha, please spare us the shattered treaty if it doesn't belong to the case. It's the whole that concerns us, not the province who surrendered on it. Allow me. The beauty of the jug does belong to the case. Childrick the Tinker won it when the Prince of Orange and his freedom fighters took Brill. A Spaniard had filled up the jug with wine and put it to his lips when Childrick came from behind, seized the jug, emptied it, and went on his way. The point, Frau Martha, would you please get to the point? Then, in the great fire of 66, it came into the hands of my late husband, bless his the soul. The devil, woman! Is there any end in sight? If I'm not allowed to state my case, Your Honor, I'll be of no use here. I'll leave now and find myself a court where I'm listened to. You are free to speak here, but not about things that are foreign to your case. If you tell us that the drug was worth a lot to you, you'll already know enough to make our judgment. I have no idea what you need to know, and it's none of my business. One thing, however, I do know. If I am to state my case, I must be able to tell you what it's about. Okay, to conclude, what happened to the drug in the fire of 66? Are you going to hear it? Will we ever find out what happened to the drug? Nothing happened to the jug in the fire of 66. It stood intact amidst the flames, and when I drew it from the ashes of the house the next day, it glittered, newly glazed, as if it, as if it had just come fresh from the kiln. Very well. We are now acquainted with the jug. We know all that happened to it and all that did. Can we go on? Well, that jug, Your Worship, was smashed by that weasel over there. Who? Him, the weasel, Ruprecht. That's an eye, Judge! You be silent until your question. You'll still have your turn today. Clerk, you've marked it in the record? Yes, I have. Good. Tell us what happened, Frau Martha. It was 11 yesterday. When? 11. In the morning? No, excuse me. In the evening. I was just about to put out my bed lamp when I hear loud men's voices a commotion coming from my daughter's bedroom at the other corner of the house. I quickly hurry down the stairs. I find her door first open, curses flying in my direction, and when I shine a light on the scene, what do I find? I find the jug smashed in the middle of the room, a broken piece in every corner, my girl wringing her hands, and that brute over there, standing in the middle of the room like a madman. My goodness, thunder, light. What? Yes, standing right there, Frau Martha. Yes. Then it was as though in a righteous fury I grown ten arms and felt myself fitted with the talons of a vulture. I corner him there and demand to know what he's doing at my house so late at night on a jug smashing rampant. I'd like to see him broken on the wheel. Otherwise, I can never lie quietly on my back again. And what do you think he says to me? He says that someone else knocked my jug off the mantle. Someone else, if you will, who just slipped out the window, and all this time he's hurling insults at my girl. Oh, that smells like a rotting fish! And then? Then, I look at Eve questioningly. Eve, I say. Was there somebody else, I ask? But Joseph and the Virgin Mary, she says. What do you think, mother? Then tell me who did it. Who else, she replies. And who else could it have been? And she swore to me that it was him. What did I swear? What did I swear to you? I swore nothing, nothing to you. Eve! No, this you are lying about. There you are, she said it! You cursed dog, shut up or I'll shove this fist right down your throat! There you are, she said it! You cursed dog, shut up or I'll shove this fist right down your throat! There you are, she said it! You cursed dog, shut up! Nothing, nothing oh, come on, whatsoever. Children, be sensible. So you didn't swear to me with an oath by Joseph and the Virgin Mary? Not by an oath! It wasn't swearing. That I will swear an oath to by Joseph and the Virgin Mary. Good people, please. Oh, Martha, look what you're doing. Frightening your dear child. If the girl will take a minute to think back, to calmly remember what happened. I say to remember both what happened and what, if she doesn't speak as she should, may happen yet. Pay attention. The girl will say as much today as she did yesterday, whether she can swear to it or not. Leave Joseph and Mary out of this. No, no, Your Honor, no. You're not to offer such... 
suggestive advice to the litigants. If she can say it to my face, shameless, that immoral tramp of a girl, that it wasn't Rupert, then she can. I won't say what. But as for my part, I can assure you that even if I can't say that she swore it, I can swear to the fact that she said it. And I will even call on Joseph and the Virgin. Now, I'm sure the girl will also. Judge Adam. What's wrong, Your Worship? Isn't it so easy, sweetheart? Out with it! Didn't you tell me so? Didn't you say it to me last night? Who Out with it! Didn't that you I tell me so? Didn't you say it to me last night? Oh. Record it, Claire! That's not! Record it, Claire! Oh! That's not! Record it, Claire! Oh! That's not! Record it, Claire! Didn't you tell me so? 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 You could not be more keen to pass the blame onto the young man than you are now if you yourself had broken the jug. I hope you are not putting more in the record clerk than the woman's confession of what she said yesterday and not the fact itself. Is it the girl's turn to testify yet? My goodness. If it isn't her turn to testify, well, a man can easily err in such things. Who should I be examining now, Your Worship? The accused? On oh, my honor, I'll take your good advice. How ingenuous you are. Yes, examine the accused. Examine, please. Examine and put an end to this. This is the last case you'll ever try. The last case. Oh, of course. Call the accused. Where were your thoughts, you old judge? With that damn peeping guinea head. If only it had died of the plague in India. I can't get that stuffed dumpling off my mind. Sorry, what kind of dumpling is on your mind? The one I meant to give to the hen. If that piece of meat doesn't swallow the pill, my goodness, who knows what'll happen to it. Judge, do your duty by the devil. The accused, come forward. Here, Your Honor, Ruprecht, son of Fight, the cottager, from Husum. Do you understand the charges Frau Martha has brought against you before the court? I do, Your Honor. Do you have anything to say in your defense? Will you confess? Or will you sink beneath yourself to lie like some godforsaken man? Yes, what I have to say in my defense, Judge? <laughs> With your permission, I'd say she hasn't said a single word of truth. Oh, really? And you plan to prove that? Oh, yes, I do. Honorable Frau Martha, calm down. There's no cause for concern. Why are you so concerned about Frau Martha, Judge? Why am I so concerned? By God, as a Christian man... State your defense and what you wish to bring before the court. Clerk, do you know how to conduct this trial? Oh, come on. Do I? Oh, what is the worship? What are you looking at? What do you have to say in your defense? This ass is standing over here like an ox. What do you have to say in your defense? <coughs> I have to say? Yes, you. Now you should tell us what happened. As if only I were allowed to get a word in. Indeed. Judge Adam, this is unacceptable. Well, it must have been about 10 o'clock at night. A quite a warm night for January, it felt like May. When I said to my father, Father, I'm going to go over to Eve's for a minute. Because you've got to know I wanted to marry her. She's a strong and solid girl. I, I met her at the harvest, and the hay was flying fast as you'll ever see. So I said to her, will you? And she said, ach, what are you squawking about? Later she said, yes. Stay on topic. Squawk? What? I said, will you? And she said, yes. But she did, Your Honor. Keep it moving. Th then I put on my cap and go, and I want to cross the bridge. But the stream is flooding and I have to go back through the village. Hey, by Jove, the God of Thunder, I'm thinking to myself. Hurry like lightning. And now, the garden gate at Martis is closed. Because the girl keeps it open only till 10. And if I don't show up by 10, she thinks I'm not coming. Sleazy place, then. And then? Then, as I was coming up along the Linden path to Martis, where the rows are densely overgrown and dark, like the Cathedral Dome in Utrecht, I hear the garden gate creaking. Well, look at that, I'm thinking to myself. Eve's still up. And I gladly set my eyes to the place from which my ears had brought the news. And I cursed them as blind when they returned to me. 
And I sent them on the spot the second time to get a better look. And I scold them as worthless hecklers, as slanderers, and lowlife gossips. And I sent them there a third time and feel, since they've done their duty now, like they're about to tear themselves willfully out of my head and find another job. Because they see Eve, I recognize her apron, and another man too next to her. Oh, really? Another man? And who was it, smartass? Who? My goodness, you're asking me. All right, all right. And if you don't catch him, you can't hang him or whatever they say. Continue. Go on. Why do you keep interrupting him, Judge? Well, I couldn't take communion at it. It was pitch dark when all cats are gray. But I think you should know this. The couple say, Lebrecht, the one they just released, he's had his eyes on my girl for a while. So the fellow's name was Lebrecht? Yes, Lebrecht. Good, good. Now we've got a name. Everything will work itself out right away. Clerk, you've got it in the record? Well, yes, Judge. Along with everything else. Good. Speak on, Ruprecht, my dear boy. <laughs> now my stomach drops. I'm, like, I'm catching the couple here at 11. I always left at 10. A white Ruprecht, I'm thinking to myself. There's still time. And you haven't grown antlers yet. But you'd better feel your forehead carefully if anything horn-like is starting to sprout. And I gently squeeze through the garden wing and hide myself in the holly bush. And I can hear no whispers, no teasing. The pull here, Your Honor. The push there. And I think I'm about to explode You wicked from. man! What a shameful speech coming from you! You scoundrel! I'll teach you what kind of fangs I've got. You don't know what I'm capable of, but as soon as we're alone, you'll see. Leave, mother! Let the carts fall where they may! You shut up over there! Prattling girl! You're asking for a clap of thunder to fall upon your head. Very strange. Wait until your question. That it welts, Your Honor, Judge Adam. It welts up like a rush of blood to the head. Air! I need some air. The button pops right off my shirt. I need some air. And now I shout and tear my shirt open. Air! I need air! And then I go and push it, kick and bang when I find the door locked up. And with a bit of force, I kick it in. Thundering boy! And just as the bag's wide open, the jug topples off the shelf, right into the room. And zip! Someone jumps out the window. Though I catch sight of his cold tails flying in the rear. And it was Labrash. Sir, who else? And since I still have the handle in my hand from when I had knocked in the door, I let him have that pound of steel right across the door. Could still reach him, Your Honor. But only just. Was it a door handle? What? I asked. But a door handle, yes. Ah. You figured it was a sword. What? A sword? Why a sword? Oh, you see, one can easily miss here. A door handle and a sword have a lot in common. I figured, upon my honor, Judge, the shaft of the handle. Shaft? Shaft? No, that's not what it was. It was the other end of the doorknob. The other end of the doorknob? Oh, well. well. But, but it had a knob of lead at the other end that I have to admit, just like the hilt of a sword. Yes, like a hilt. Good. Like a sword's handle. Must have been some kind of cruel weapon in any case. <laughs> that I do. Let's get to the point, gentlemen, the point. Just a little banter, your worship. Clerk, <coughs> you there, continue. Now the guy falls, and I'm about to turn around, and I see the man scrambling to get back to his feet. I'm surprised he's still alive, and climb onto the window to stop the fellow from getting away. When suddenly, a handful of coarse sand, and the night, and the guy, and the world, and the windowsill that I'm standing on to help me got everything collapses like a tent, and the sand flies like hail driving hard into my eyes. Well, I'll be damned. And who did that? Who? It was Liebrecht. The villain. Upon my honor, if it was him. Who else? And now she comes, and yells, my God, what have you done? And Ruprecht, how could you? Then I get up. Why should I defy my fists with her? So I curse her and tell her she's a dirty slut and I think that's good enough for her. But look, I can't even talk through all the tears. And now Frau Marte has stepped into the room holding up the lamp. And I can see the girl, the pitiful wreck, trampling in front of me. The girl who was always so lively and brave. And I think to myself, being blind is not the worst thing. 
I'd have given my two eyes to anyone who wanted them to play marbles with. This man does not deserve- Silence, girl! Well, the rest you know already. The rest? What the rest? Oh, yeah. Now Frau Marte came and squawked at me, and Ralph the neighbor came, and Hinz the neighbor, and Aunt Susie and Aunt Lisa came, and servants and maids and dogs and cats came. It was a fiasco. And then Frau Marte asked the girl over there who broke her jug. And she, she told them, as you know, that it was me. <laughs> My goodness, she wasn't entirely wrong. That little cobbler's got a nice hole in his head from me. That's the picture she went to well with once too often. Frau Martha, what's your reply to this account? What's my reply? I say that this fable is like a badger Bada. that strangles truth in his with a squawking head. Was recht liebt, so Anyone who cares for justice should be reaching for their bags to club this monster of the night to death. There you'll have to bring us some proof, Frau Martha. Gladly. Here is my witness. Speak. Your daughter? No, Frau Martha. No? And why not? Witness, Your Honor? But doesn't the law book say in section quarto, or I think it's quinto, that when jugs or something are smashed by fat young louts, that daughters may not testify for their mothers? <laughs> in your head, science and error are mixed together intimately, like a dough into the same ball. With each slice, you give me a piece of each. The girl isn't witnessing yet. She'll simply give a statement for now. If and whether she can and will witness, it will become clear based upon her statement. But, a state, section 6. But what she says, we're not to believe. <laughs> Come forward, my child. <clears throat> Excuse me, Lish. Sorry, my mouth is getting terribly dry. Lish, a glass of water, please. Can I also offer you? No, thank you. <laughs> How about a French red? Mosel? Uh, no, no, Anything thank you. you like. I'm fine. <laughs> if I may speak openly, Your Worship, I think this case really calls for a compromise. A compromise? That is not clear to me, Judge. People with common sense may compromise. But how you, how you hope to attain a compromise, given that the matter has hardly been straightened out. This I should like to hear from you. Tell me, how do you hope to accomplish this? Have you already reached a judgment? My goodness. Since the law is leaving me in the lurch, if I may take philosophy as my idea, then it was... Labrecht. Who? Or Ruprecht. Who? Or Labrecht who broke the jug. Who was it then? Labrecht or Ruprecht? You're grasping with your judgment, I see, like a hand full into a sack of beans. <laughs> oh my honor. I'd be quite all right if both of them were guilty. Well, ask them and you shall find out. Gladly. But if you figure it out, then I'm a villain. Clerk, do you have the record ready? Yes, I do. Good. And I'm breaking off a separate page for myself. I mean, you can see what ends up written on it. Separate page. Fine by me. Speak now, my child. Speak. Oh, Evie, speak. Speak now, young virgin Evie. Give God, do you hear, sweetheart? Give, give to him, to the world, something of the truth. Remember that. Here you stand before God's judgment seat, and you mustn't trouble your judge with denials and babblings that have no bearing on the matter at hand. Oh, what am I saying? You've got some sense in you. A judge, you know, is always a judge. And if one needs him today, another will need him tomorrow. If you say it was Labrecht, then good. And if you say it was Ruprecht, also good. Speak this way or that, I'm not an honest fellow. Everything will turn out whichever way you wish. But if you want to stand here and gossip to me about someone else, perhaps some third person, start naming silly names, see, child. You better watch out. I 
won't say more than that. Gleason, the hell with it. No one will believe you, and no one, Evie, in all the Netherlands. You know very well the white walls cannot bear witness for you, and he too will know how to defend himself. And then your repressed will really be in trouble. If you could stop with all your speeches, useless drivel with no rhyme or reason to it. Does your worship not understand me? Enough! You've already spoken too long from the bench. On my honor. I didn't study at the University of Worship, and if I'm not understood by the judge from Utrecht, it may, however, be different with these common The young lady, I'll bet you, knows what I want. Oh, come on now. What's this all about? Out with it now and don't hold back. Oh, dearest mother! You, I'm telling you. My goodness, Fomat, it's hard not to hold back when your conscience has you by the throat. Shut up, Sir Impudence! Not another word from you. Who was it? Oh, Jesus! You worthless crook, you gaping gape, as if she was a common whore. Was it our Lord Jesus? From Martha, what senselessness. What good does it do? Leave the poor girl alone, intimidating the child. Poor, dim one. That won't help anything. Give the girl a moment to recollect. Oh yes, recollect indeed. I pity her. Oh, leave the jug, I beg you. I carry it all the way to Utrecht. Such a jug. I wish I had been the one to smash it in two. Oh, you shameless villain! You ought to be ashamed that you won't just say, Fine, I smashed the jug. Ugh, Ruprecht! You should be ashamed that you can't trust me in my actions. Didn't I give you my hand and say yes when you asked me, Eve? Will you be true to me? Don't you know that you're worth more to me than the damn cobbler? And if you had seen me in my rush drink from the jug, you should have thought, Eve's an honest girl. All of this will resolve itself in her favor, if not in this life, then in the next. And when we rise again, there'll be another day. My god, it's too long for me to wait, baby. But I regret with my hands that I gladly believe. And if it had been Labrest, why, Ruprest, why or let me die an eternal death? Why would I not have confided in you alone? But why in front of neighbors, servants, and maids? Oh, why sh shouldn't I say, relying on your trust, that it was you? Why not should I? Why should I not? Ah, to hell with it. Say it. It's fine by me if you can spare yourself the stocks that way. Oh, you repulsive man! Ungrateful, that's what you deserve, that I should save myself from the stocks, that I, with a single word, should bring honor to myself and eternal destruction to you. Well, and the single word, are we going to hear it? So it wasn't your Ruprash? No, gracious madam. Since he himself wants it that way, and only for his sake I didn't say it before, Ruprash didn't break the jug. And if he denies it himself, you can't believe him. Eve, not Ruprecht? No, mother, and if I said it yesterday, I was lying. I was going to break all of your damn bones, girl. Do what you but want. Do not Get that damned old hag out of here. Why should it have been Ruprecht anyways? Did she hold the candle in the business or what? I think the young lady herself should know who it was, and I'll be damned if it wasn't Labrecht. Or Ruprecht. So was it Labrecht? Or Ruprecht. Him? Evie, wasn't it Labrecht, or my Ruprecht. sweetheart? How can you say that it was Lambrecht, you shameless scum? Young lady, how dare you talk that thing? Is that the honor you owe to the judge? What? That judge there? He himself who deserves to stand before the judgment seat. He who knows all too well who it was. How can you say that it was Lambrecht when you know that he was in Utrecht, when you sent him to the commission of conscription in Utrecht, how can you say that it was Labrecht when you know that he was in Utrecht? Well, who else could it have been? If not Labrecht. Ruprecht. I devil. Not Ruprecht. Labrecht. Not Labrecht. Ruprecht. What are you up to? Tell us what happened. Excuse me, Your Worship, but the young lady can't help you here. Can't help. Can't help me. And why not? She's just a simple child. If you see her, good but a little simple, so young, barely confirmed, blushes at the first sight of a beard, even at a distance. Such common folk, 
they take it just fine in the dark. And then when the day comes around, they'll deny it before their judge. Such charity you show, judge. So mild you are in all things concerning the young girl. To tell you the truth, Your Honor, her father was a good friend of mine. Should your grace wish to be merciful today, we'll do no more than is our duty and let his daughter go. I have a great desire within me, judge, to get to the bottom of this affair. Be bold, my child. Tell us who broke the child. You stand before no one in this moment who could not forgive you for a misstep. Gracious, honorable, and merciful judge, release me from recounting all that has occurred. Do not think ill of this refusal. It is heaven's marvelous providence that seals my mouth in this affair. That Ruprecht did not break the jug, that I will swear an oath to if you command it upon a holy altar. But what happened yesterday and everything else about it is my own affair. My mother cannot ask the whole yarn in order to recover the lone thread that belongs to her. I cannot say not here who broke the jug. To do so would touch on secrets that are not my possession and which are completely foreign to the jug. Sooner or later, I will tell her, but this tribunal here is not the place where she has the right to ask it of me. No, 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 no right at all. On my honor, no. The young lady certainly knows her way around the law. If she wishes to swear the oath before the court, the mother's complaint will be expunged. Nobody can object to that. What's your reply to this account, Frau Mata? I am slow, Your Worship, to provide an adequate response. Then I ask you to blame it on the stroke that just paralyzed my tongue. Examples abound of degenerate souls who, in order to save their honor before the world, risk perjury before the bar of justice. But that an oath should be sworn upon a holy altar, only to go straight to the pillory, that the world has never before seen. If it were demonstrable that it was someone other than Ruprecht who broke my jug, if it were even so much as possible, then believe me, Your Honor, I would not waste another minute here. I would put a bench outside to get her set up and say, go, my child, the world is wide and you pay no rent there. And you have inherited long hair too, with which, when the time is ripe, you can hang yourself. Gentle, gentle, Mama. But since I cannot prove this thing, except through her who denies me this service, and since I'm wholly convinced that it was no other than Ruprecht, still their strong desire to recant it leads me into a shameful suspicion. Last night, hides another crime yet beyond the destruction of the jug. I must tell you, Your Worship, that Ruprecht is being conscripted. In only a few days, he is to swear his allegiance to the flag in Utrecht. The young sons of the land are running off. Suppose that last night he said, what do you think, Evie? The world is big, and you have the keys to both the box and the chest. And she, she'd resisted him a little, and the rest, since I disrupted them, could have gone on just the same, from vengeance on his part and from love on hers. Head on, Crow, what kind of talk is this? Keys to the box of chess? I am a deserter. Stick to the matter at hand. It's the jug we're talking about here. Prove, prove that Rupresh broke it. Very well, Your Worship. If you call Frau Brigitte here, who is his aunt, she will be enough for me, since she will contradict the main point of his defense. That is before, because she, Half an hour before the, struck, before the clock struck 11, note well, before the jug got smashed, already found him in the garden with Eve. And if the fable that he's constructed before us is to be split from head to toe with a stroke of a single tongue, that, your high judges, I'll leave you to examine for yourself. Who did My sister, him, him and Eve in the garden. Hang yourself. Hang yourself. Him and Eve in the garden, half past ten, an exchange of words was going on between them. Now caressing, now bullying, as if he was trying to convince her to do something. Aside. Well, I'll be damned. The devil's doing me a favor. Bring this woman here. Jonas, I beg you! Not one word of this is true! It is impossible! Wait here, you delinquent! Bailiff! Harvey! It's when criminals are on the loose that jugs get smashed. Go, clerk, please, get Frabagita over here. Listen, you damn weasel! What are you up to? I'll break every bone in your body! What for? Wait, yeah, here, you Why did you keep quiet about fooling around with that harlot? 
in the garden at half past ten. Why did you withhold it? Wait, 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 wait here, you delinquent! Wait, here, you delinquent! Wait, here, you delinquent! Why not hang her by the latch right beside you? Oh, oh, and if she does bear witness to it, you better watch out. You and the pure virgin Eve over there, despite how you've been acting before the court, you're both hiding under the same blanket. There's a shameful secret that she's withholding, and it's only in order to protect someone that she's not saying anything here. Secret? Hey, Wait, you, you the Why did you pack your things last night? Hmm? Why did you pack your things? My things? Hey, yeah. Sir. Wait, hey, sir. here you delinquent. Underwear. A bundle. The way a traveller throws it across his shoulder. Because I'm supposed yeah, to go Wait, here, here you delinquent! Wait, here you delinquent! Wait, here you delinquent! Wait, here you delinquent! Ha! To Utrecht. Yeah, you were in quite a rush to get to Utrecht. The day before yesterday, you didn't even know whether you were travelling on the fifth or sixth day. Do you have something to add to the matter, father of the accused? No, your worship. I don't want to say anything, yet. I was home when the jug got smashed, and as to other matters, I confess that when I weigh what I have heard thus far, I find nothing which casts suspicion upon my son. Completely convinced of his innocence, I came here merely to resolve the marital engagement as soon as the case was resolved, and to take back the silver chain and token penny that he gave to the girl to commemorate their engagement last fall. If now some flight and treason should show up, then this good people would be as new to me and my grey heirs as it would to you. But if it's true, the devil should break his neck. Get Frau Brigitte here, Judge Adam. Doesn't your worship grow tired of this affair? It's going on forever. Still has my accounts and files to look over. What's the time? The clock just struck the half. Eleven? Excuse me, twelve. It's fine. I think either you've gone mad or the time has. Oh, looks like I'm a liar. So, what's your command, Your Worship? I'm of the opinion that we should. Then wrap it up. Great. Excuse me, I'm of the opinion that we should go on. is very precious to me, will kindly show a little more interest in the matter. Couldn't we, in the meantime, take a little break, stretch our legs for a while? Hmm, okay. What I wanted to ask Would you though... Would you also allow that the litigants... The litigants? What? Yes, outside the door. What? Okay, ten minute intermission.
all malign bachelors. What others have to scrape and scrounge to share with wives and children, we may fully enjoy with a single friend whenever the occasion suits. What I want to say though, Judge, is how do you get that boom? That's a nasty hole in your head right there. I fell. You fell? Over what? Over, I'll tell you the truth, Your Honor, over myself. You see, I crashed head first against the stove, and until this hour, I don't know how. Why do you ask? From behind. What? Or from the front. You have two wounds, one in the front and one in the back. From the front and from behind. How? Well, first like this, then like that. First, against the edge of the stove, which struck this gash into my forehead, then back from the stove onto the floor where I banged up the back of my head. May I? Scratches. <laughs> scratches and scratches. No, 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 no. These are no women's nail scratches. I believe it. Another benefit of being a maligned old bachelor. Wigs. They're silkworms left on the edge of the stove for drying. To your health. I misplaced my glasses. I had my head so close to the dispute that my wig caught fire in the candle's flame. Me, I'm keeping heavens raining down fire on the sinner's head, and I clutch the wig to throw it off. But before I can loosen the neck band, it's already ablaze. Like Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. I can barely take three hairs on my head. Yes, and the other one's yours is done. Yes, yes, with the wig maker. Let's get back to our business. 
Oh, come on, the hour's rolling by. Just a tiny glass. <laughs> that labrash. If that strange fellow was telling the truth, he too fell into an evil thing. Upon my honor. If this matter cannot be entangled, as I almost fear will be the case, you still be able to recognize the perpetrator in town by his wound. Near Shiner? What? Abu Oppenheimer. Nierstein, Nierstein, yes. You know your stuff. From Nierstein as though I brought it myself. I tasted it three years ago at the wine press. How high is the window? You there, from Arthur. My window? Yes, your window, the one where the girl sleeps. That room can only be on the first floor with a cellar underneath. The window can't be more than nine feet from the ground. But the whole thing, when I think about it, is quite awkward for jumping out. There is a grapevine sticking out two feet from the wall. Its vines wind themselves through a trellis along the entire length of the wall. The window itself is closely woven among them. Even a boar with a good set of tusks would have trouble getting through. And there was no boar hanging in there. What do you mean? Never mind. How many times did you get this one on the head? Here. No, thank you. Give me your glass. It's still half -time. I'll fill it. Love me. Oh, come on, for the right number. Please. Oh, come on, it's the Pythagorean rule. <laughs> <laughs> How many times do you hit the sinner on the head? One is the Lord. Two is the dark chaos. Three is the world. Three glasses I'll raise for myself. And with the third, one must be the drop of the sun. And with the others, the starry skies. How many times do you hit on the head, him, I'm asking him, Rupert. Are we gonna hear it? How many times did you hit the sinful scapegoat? Mm. Out with it! Did the boy even remember? Did you forget? With the doorknob? Yes, how should I know? And the window as you were swinging down at him. Two times, Your Honor. Scout, remember. Twice? Could you have killed a man with two such blows, do you know? To your health, Your Honor. A toast. <sighs> What is good and just and faithful, gentlemen? Well, then, for the last time. Mm. Judge Adam, you said the girl helps you with your hands, the ones on your farm that are falling through? Yes, she does that, Your Worship. The day before yesterday, he sent a sick guinea man to our house for her, one that was almost dead. And last year, she saved one of his from the food. But the man hasn't come to thank her yet. Four more wine, Judge Adam. Four more wine. At your service. You're making me very happy. To your help, Judge Adam. I'm sure he'll come by sooner or later from my If you think so, I doubt it. If I had some Nierschneider to put before the man of the kind that you're drinking now, or that my late husband used to keep in the cellar from time to time, then things may have been different. But I am a poor widow, and I have nothing in my house with which to entice him. All the better. Proper Gita, come in. Is that the woman, Clafish? Your worship, this is Proper Gita. Very good, let's get the matter settled and clear the tables. Now, Evie, listen up. Prepare the food for me properly, as you know how. Then I'll come celebrate this evening over a carp supper. The pill's got to go all the way down the old tramp's gullet. If it's too big, she'll be swallowing her death. What kind of a wig has Frau Brigitte brought with her? Your Honor. The wig? What is she carrying in over there? Aha! What? Excuse me. Are you going to tell me? If your worship would be so good as to have the judge question the woman, I have no doubt that the ownership of the wig and everything else will be revealed. I don't care who owns it. How did the lady get it? Where did she find it? The lady found the wig in the trace at Frau Margarita Rules. It was hanging there, propped up like a nest in the climbing grapevines, just under the window of the girl's room. What? In my house, in the trellis? Judge Adam, if you have something to tell me, I'll ask you for the court's honor to be so good and delicate. Me? To you? 
No, do you not? On oh my honor. This wig here is not yours? The wig is That is Thunderstrike it! The very one I gave to the boy eight days ago to bring to the wig makers a new trick! What? A new trick. What? Me? Did I not give him the wig? The weasel. What he went to Utrecht eight days ago to bring to the Meister Man? Did you, what? You gave me? Why? Why didn't you bring back the wig? Why didn't you, as I ordered, drop it off at the master in the workshop? Did I, what? Well, I dropped it off at the workshop. The Meister Man oh, took it. Dropped it off? Sure. Now it's hanging on the trellis of Frau Martha's? Just you wait, you stupid dog. You won't get away with it. I think you're hiding something. Some disguise, some mutiny. I don't know. May I interrogate this woman now, madam? Good people. I don't think it was Rupert who did it. Let me tell you why. As I'm walking by the Linden Park last night, by Frau Martha's, a fellow rushes past me, bareheaded, with a goat's foot. And in his wake, a stench like fumes of tar and fire and brimstone. I call on God for mercy and turn around and... In the distance, the bald head like smoldering wood. What happens to those? Are you crazy? You mean to say what's the devil? Quiet! Quiet. I know what I saw and smelled. Woman, I don't want to investigate whether it was a devil. I can't indict him. If you want to tell us of another man, then do so. But please spare us any more talk of that sin. But you watch him, let her finish. This idiotic rabble. Fine, as you like. Clark Leash is my witness. What do you mean you're a witness? In a sense, yes. Honestly, I do not know. With all due respect, please let the woman finish. I'm not alleging it was the devil, but with a goat's foot and a bald head and the fumes left behind, unless I'm completely mistaken, it's very much the truth. Continue. When I heard what happened at Mardoral, I went to her house to investigate, to see where the drug smasher had left traps by the trellis. And I saw what did I see, you ask? I saw, on the left side, the nice human, properly marked out, human foot, and on the right, homeless, crudely smashed in a horrible, clunking goat's foot! Is that possible? That's an insanity and abomination! I know what I saw! First, there! Look! When he jumped off. Widening circle as though a pig had rolled in it, and on the left side, human's foot, right side, goat's foot, human's foot, goat's foot, human's foot, goat's foot, human's foot, goat's foot! Up the path and into the distance. Damn it! Did the brat have the audacity dressed as the devil? What? Me? Quiet! Quiet. As a man tracking a badger finally, finally discovers its trail. Hunter, such did I rejoice. Clark Leash, I said, for I saw him coming for me, sent by you, Clark Leash. Hold your proceedings, for the fellow you want does not stand before you in judgment. He stands in no worse place than hell itself. This is the trail it. he walked. Your what? She's right about the tracks. A goat's foot. But belonging to a human, but try to prop to like a goat's foot. My goodness, people. The matter seems to be serious. Many biting essays have been written to refute the existence of God. No atheist, as far as I know, has ever decisively proved away the devil. The matter seems to call for a special examination. I therefore propose that before we draw a conclusion, we first ask the Synod in the Hague whether the court has the right to assume it was Beelzebub who broke the jug. Just the kind of request I'd expect from you. <laughs> what do you think, Lucky? Your worship will not require the Synod in order to judge. Continue, with your permission, your report for Abrigita. That way, with all the connections, the case, I hope, will be made quite clear. 
following this, I said, Clark Leaf, let's follow the trail and see where it leads. Good, Fra Brigitta, he says. Good idea. Perhaps we shan't stray far from our path if we go by the village, Judge Adam's house. And then you found? The trail led to you, as Clark Leaf said. To us, right here. Yes, to you. Surely, Surely the devil doesn't live, live in the courthouse. I saw before me humans foot, goats foot, humans foot, goats foot, humans foot, goats foot. Humans foot, goats foot, humans foot, goats foot, humans foot, goats foot. Hey, you idiotic rabble. Does anyone in this town have ill found feet? Huh. Well, actually, there is someone here in Brisbane. Indeed, and who? Your worship will have to ask the judge. Judge Adam. Not to my knowledge. I've been an officer of Weasel for ten years, and as far as I know, everything has grown straight and orderly. Then who do you think that is? Why don't you leave your feet out in the open? What are you doing anxiously sticking them behind the chair? One could almost think that it was you who left those tracks. <laughs> Me? The tracks? Am I the devil? Does this look like a goat's foot to you? <laughs> Like this, the devil could go to every ball and dance. <laughs> I would say the same. How would the Lord Villain judge me? Oh, come on, come on! Come on, the judge is session. <laughs> the only thing I'm still in doubt about, good people, is this fancy piece of decoration. What kind of fancy? No way. Whoever saw the devil dressed in such attire? <laughs> Towering at First ink with more white powder than the one the dean of the cathedral wears at the pump. <laughs> <laughs> we in the countryside, Fra Brigitte, have only a terribly limited knowledge of the current fashions down in hell. <laughs> Ordinarily, the devil sports his own hair, but up here on earth, I'm quite convinced he throws on a good wig in order to mix him with the upper crust. <laughs> you worthless man! You ought to be driven from the tribunal in front of all these commoners. The only thing protecting you now is the honor of the court. I hope you won't. You will talk nothing now. Do you believe that I, the judge, lost the wig in the grapevine? <laughs> no, you are so fired and sudden. <laughs> <laughs> no, believe your worship. I can't gain nothing. Oh, <laughs> people! <laughs> if appearances seem to condemn me, I beg you not to be hasty. I'm standing on the border of honor and harlotry, and as long as the young lady says nothing, I do not understand by what right you call me guilty. I sit here on the judge's seat of Fleesom and set the wig before me, and will send anyone who alleges his mind to the higher court in retract. The wig fits upon your head. Thunder and lightning. Run upon your hair. Defamation! You disagree. As a coat, this thing would be too big. That's how loose it is on my head. Ah, the pants of thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, will you or shall I adjourn the session? Yes, what do you order? You speak, was it him? Ah, be quiet! Hold on, you beast, I'll get you! <laughs> you let me go for you, just to wait. You yeah. are throwing more sand into my eyes today! You do not have sense, Judge! Yes. If your worship will allow, I'll pronounce the sentence. Very good, pronounce it! The matter has now been decided, yeah. and it was Rupert. <laughs> his neck will be locked in irons, and on account of his contempt for his judge, he will be thrown behind bars. For how long have you had to decide? Throw <laughs> Rupert into irons? Me, you go to jail. Oh, set it down, children. Are you finished? The jug, as far as I'm concerned, he may replace or he may not. Excellent. God is a jug. Jail. Stick his neck in irons. Are you not also a judge? He is the there. judge. They're not that the shameless man, the, man, the one room. sitting there. He himself did it. Up, Ruprush. The judge Adam broke the jug. You there? Ju just wait. The yes, him. It was him that was with your Eve yesterday. Up, Ruprush. Go, grab him. Throw him down now, however you want. It doesn't matter. He deserves the irons. Go, Ruprush. Go. Throw the judge Adam from the bench.
made a section of two lines on the one side of the point, after passing through infinity, suddenly finds itself again on the other side, or the image of a concave mirror, after moving away into the infinite, suddenly stands close before us again. In this way, too, when knowledge has gone through infinity, grace returns, such that it appears most purely in that human body that either has no consciousness or an infinite one, that is, in a puppet or in a god. Just as the intersection of two lines on the one side of a point, just as you're passing into a new line, suddenly just as the intersection of two lines on the one side of a point, this way to the knowledge is gone through infinity, grace returns. Such that it appears most purely in that human body that either has no consciousness or an infinite one. That is, when knowledge is gone through infinity,